Johnny Dollar. Yeah. What? I said, yeah. Well, what's that supposed to mean, and who are you? Oh, Johnny, this is Pat McCracken at Universal Adjustment Bureau. Well, hi, Pat, but what's with the crazy dialogue? Oh, that word, that yeah, was most of the conversation I got from some crazy character who just called in. I'm afraid I don't dig you. Oh, he called about five minutes ago. Said he'd been trying to reach you, but he got no answer. I was out picking up a morning paper. Who was he, Pat? He wouldn't say. He just gave his phone number. Wait a minute. There's only one man in the world talks like that. Yeah. Yeah. Was the call from San Francisco? No. No. Oh. Los Angeles. Well, then maybe I was... Uh... Well, because the man I was thinking of... Now, what? wait a minute. Yes. Yes, I'm waiting, John. Tell me just one thing, Pat. Well... Have any of your insurance companies been having to pay off on any big fires lately? I mean, out in Los Angeles? On any fires? You'd better start checking with those companies out there. No, wait a minute. Do it, Pat. And I'll lay odds that you get a handful of arson reports. Arson? Yes. Johnny, just because some silly guy calls up and all he says is, yeah. Hey, let me have that phone number he gave you. Oh, Johnny. Come on, come on, Pat. What is it? Uh, Hollywood 8. 3142. Okay, now you go ahead and check with your West Coast insurance Johnny, company. Johnny. And get ready to pay my expense account to Los Angeles. Are you kidding? Are you trying to tell me that the way some jerk says yeah means arson on the West Coast? Now, don't be silly. You, uh, want to bet? Oh, Johnny. Pat, I'll call you back. <laughs> CBS Radio brings you Bob Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Talk about best-selling records. Here's a familiar tune about America's best-selling filter cigarette, Winston. Tobacco flavor. And you know, that's because only Winston has filter blend up front. Choice, flavorful tobaccos, specially selected and specially processed for filter smoking. No wonder Winston tastes good. Like a cigarette should. Smoke Winston. And now, act one of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Universal Adjustment Bureau Home Office, Hartford, Connecticut. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the burning desire matter. As I told Pat McCracken, there was only one person I knew whose conversation might consist mostly of that one word. So, expense account item 1250 for a phone call to Hollywood 83142. Hello? Hello? Yeah. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah. Smokey Sullivan. Well? Smokey, this is Johnny Dollar. Yeah. Hey, you tried to call me here in Hartford. I was out. You called Universal Adjustment Bureau. I got the message. Here I am. Yeah, Johnny. Only what are you doing in L.A.? Last time I saw you was in San Francisco. Got a job here, Johnny. Legit. Hey, that's the stuff. Pays off, too, doesn't it? Yeah. You're my friend, Johnny. You've done a lot for me. So when I got a chance to help you... Well, there's something doing out there, Smokey, that I ought to know about? A bunch of fires, Johnny. Arson, huh? Yeah. Is there insurance involved? Why else anybody use a torch? Yeah, you got a point there. But do you have any lead on whoever is behind the fires? Yeah. So you better come out here, Johnny. Okay. The first plane I can get. Where'll I find you? 322 South Equity Avenue. South Equity. Okay, Smokey. I'll be there. Yeah. Uh-huh. Now I'll call to Pat McCracken, pack my bag, and... 
Johnny Dollar. Oh, Johnny, thank goodness. Pat? Yes. I was just about to pack up and no, tell don't you. don't you ever get off that phone of yours? I was talking to the guy listen, who telephoned... Listen to me. Johnny, you were right. Only reason that nobody smelled a rat is because a different insurance company was stuck with each of those fires out there. So until I called them to give me a report... Oh, uh, and listen. I'm listening, Pat. According to the L.A. police, every one of them could have been arson. Okay, I'll grab the first Seven point. of them in a row, Johnny, that we know about so far, I mean. I haven't got the reports in yet from all the companies, and I'm also waiting for another report from the police. Now, Johnny, Johnny, your best contact out there... That I've already got. What? Yeah. Oh, you mean that character who called us up? Yeah. Look, will you please tell me, who is he? What does he know about this? Universal Adjustment, putting the old expense account on this. Yes, of course. Then I'll give it all to you in the usual report. See you. Oh, now, Johnny, listen. Sorry, Pat, I gotta catch a plane. Expense account item two, $162.85 plane ticket from Hartford to Los Angeles. Thanks to the time differential, it was only shortly after dark when the big mainliner set down at the L.A. International Airport. Item three, seven fifty for a cab to Smokey's address. It was uh, hardly Beverly Hills or Bel Air, believe me. 322 South Equity was in a beat-up part of a downtown industrial section. A weather-beaten three-story house with a sign out front that said, Borders by the week of months. Yeah, who are you? Well, my name is... Just what's a fancy dresser like you want around a place like this, huh? Well... I'm looking for a man by the name of Smokey Sullivan. I understand he lives here. That's right. Uh, you, uh, are you the man he said he was expecting? That's right. My name is Johnny Dollar. Well, he didn't tell me what the name was, but if you're sure he was expecting... I'm sure. Now, where is his room? Uh, now, I don't know. Where is his room, please? Well, it's up on the second floor, just to the right after you get up the stairs. Okay, now, thank look, you very much. Well, now, maybe you'd better... It's all right, I'll find it. Thanks a lot. No, what I mean is, I thought you'd already come. I mean, what I mean is... Smokey? Hey, Smokey, it's Johnny Dollar. Huh, what was that? Smokey! Now, what's all the... Ra oh, no. Hey, Smokey, can you hear me? Who did this? Are you... Good Lord. Smokey had really had it. Whoever had beaten him up probably would have killed him if I hadn't come along and scared him away. I looked out of the broken window, but of course was too late to see who'd done this. Meantime, the landlady appeared, and I had to get me some towels and a basin of cold water. Here you are, Mr. Oh, good. Thanks. Thanks Ooh, a lot. Somebody sure laid into him. I'll say that. You ask me to wonder if he stays alive. He'll be all right. He'd better be. You're lucky you come along to see him is all I got to say. Yeah, you better give me a couple more towels and maybe another basin of water. No, wait. What? You won't need him, mister. I got a much better idea. If I can find it. Hey, Smokey. <laughs> Give me a minute to find that bottle. Well, here it is. Yes, sir. This here will fix him up. Smokey, can you hear me? Fix him up quicker than a wink. It's Johnny. Johnny Dollar. Here now, mister. You just pour a slug of this down his gullet and see if it don't bring him to. Huh? Oh, yeah. Good idea. Let me have that. Oh, sure. Real genuine California cognac, it is. And soak up another towel for me, oh, would you yeah, please? I sure will, mister. All right, here now, Smokey, here. See if you can get down some of this. Easy now, huh? That's it. Atta boy. Really? <coughs> yeah. A little more of this. Here, here. You know, before you come up here, mister, I tried to tell you... Uh, easy now, Smokey. You. Yeah, I tried to tell you. I thought that mm. other man that come up here to see him was the one he was expecting. Here, now, here's your fresh towel. Thanks, did you say other man? That's right. Come in just before you did. You know him, who he was? The chimp. What? What's more he... The chimp. Yeah. That's who it was. The chimp? Yeah. Strong, strong arm for Mickey Fortina. Who's Mickey Fortina? He, he's a one that... Oh, now, look. Look, Smokey, maybe you'd better wait until you feel better. You and I could get a doctor. No. Now, listen, Johnny. Yeah? Unless you stop him, there's going to be a lot... More fires around here. Fires? 
That's what he said. Just but... don't worry about it, Miss, uh, Mrs. Uh... Miss Fletcher. Bertha Fletcher. That's my Johnny. name. Johnny. Johnny, listen. Oh, okay, Mrs. Fletcher. You, you go along. I'll take care of him. Oh, well, now, I, I, I don't know. You <clears throat> sure I hadn't better get a doctor? No, no, no. I'll take him to a hotel. When his condition, I'll look after him. No, you him. go downstairs and get me a cab. Well, I don't oh, know. Oh, here, I... here's a ten spot for your trouble and this bottle of brandy. Oh, Oh, well, thanks. You're a gem. Go ahead, please. Oh, yes, sir. Anything you say. Charlie. Yeah? you got to listen to me. Yeah, go ahead. You had come up the stairs, scared him off. The chip might have killed me. Well, he won't get to you again. I'm going to take you out of this place. Somebody must have tipped off Mickey Fortita. Must have known I put in that call to you. So listen, Johnny. Later, Smokey. After I get you out of here. Item four, the ten bucks to Miss Fletcher. Item five, a bucket and a half for a cab to the Stadler Hotel where I had to show my credentials to the room clerk to get a bed for the somewhat mangled Smokey Sullivan. Item six, fifteen dollars to the doctor who came up to the room and I must admit got him back in a pretty good shape. Then when the doctor had left us... Yeah, Johnny, all those fires, big insurance, all of them set. Seven of them in a row. So that means by one fire, no. this Mickey Fortina you mentioned, huh? No, Johnny, Mickey's too smart for that. What? All set by different guys. I don't know who they are, but I see no remains. And the police ain't sure, but I know there was arson. Who's Mickey Fortina? Uh... He's a go-between. I've seen this happen before. Yeah? Wisco, Seattle, and Denver, a lot of places. He brings in a lot of boys of his own. Everyone got a different way of setting the blaze. So the cops can't tie it up with any local boy whose uh, methods they know. Yeah. Fortina's a go-between? He makes the deal with whoever wants a fire. And the police aren't on to him? What for? He never set a fire himself. Well, I know, but he's the guy that... By the time the arson squad is in, the guy who done it is far away. So there's no witness can prove Fortina set up the deal. And the police have never been able to put the squeeze on whoever made the deal for a fire? And get sent up for it? For being accessory or whatever you call it? Oh, yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah. Fortina sent for me when he found out I was here in L.A. I... I used to know him, Johnny. Wanted you to be a torch for him, huh? Uh, he just asked if I wanted to work for him. And he knew that I knew what he meant. But if you knew that Fortina was operating here... Smokey... Well, how could I prove it? How can I prove it now? Well, maybe I can. But if he finds out I sent for you, Johnny... It looks to me like he already has. Oh, yeah. All right, then. If somebody who wants a fire can get to Mickey Fortina, there must be some way I can. At his office. His what? At his office every night. 1025 South Spring. He has an office for a racket like this? Why, you'd never know it. You'll see. Yeah, I think I'd better see. Hey, Smokey, you... Who's that? You got a gun, Johnny. Right here and ready. Open up in there. This is the police. Police, huh? Well, surprise. It is the police. The room clerk reported a man was brought in here who... Johnny! Yeah, Pat. Pat yeah. Nichols. Sergeant Nichols now, Johnny. Good, good. How are you, boy? Now, wait. Wait a minute. Is this the man you brought in here? Smokey Sullivan? I, uh, listen, officer, I... Johnny, uh, you think maybe Smokey is tied in with this string of fires out here? No, no, tell him, Johnny. No, 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 you you tell him, Smokey, anything you want. Well, no, 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 look, you you know I'm I'm no good at talking to a cop, Yeah, well, Johnny. give it a try. And, Pat, uh, be sure you stick around to keep an eye on him. What? Smokey may need a bodyguard. You. Huh? Yeah. Until after I made a little business call. Johnny. Now, look, if you're out here because of those fires... Did I say I was? I didn't tell him anything like that, did I, Smokey? Uh, no, Johnny. And I see what you mean. Now, now listen. Just to... uh, stick around, Pat. I'll see you later. If I had told Pat where I was going, he might have wanted to come along. And a man in the uniform would hardly have helped in the plan I had for trapping Mickey Fortina. But you know something? Going over to see him alone was a big mistake. One I almost didn't live to regret.
will bring you Act Two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in exactly one minute. Here's Hollywood star Mona Freeman. Who feels like acting with a miserable cold? I relieve cold distress the fast way with four-way cold tablets. Yes, tests of all the leading cold tablets proved four-way fastest acting. Amazing four-way starts in minutes to relieve muscular pains and headache, reduce fever, calm upset stomach, also overcomes irregularity. When a cold strikes, do what I do. Take four-way cold tablets. It's the fast way to relieve nasty cold distress and feel better quickly. Four-way, only 29 cents. Now, here's a word about another fine product of Grove Laboratories. Had dandruff for years? Now get rid of it in three minutes with Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo. Three minutes with Fitch regularly is guaranteed to keep unsightly dandruff away forever. Apply Fitch before wetting hair. Rub in one minute. Add water. Lather one minute. Then rinse one minute. Every trace of dandruff goes down the drain. Three minutes with Fitch, embarrassing dandruff's gone. Fitch can also leave hair up to 35% brighter. Get Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo today. And now, act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar and the Burning Desire Matter. My plan for trapping Mickey Fortina was a very simple one. I'd make like a property owner who was anxious to collect some fire insurance, who was willing to pay in advance to make sure my property went up in flames. Easy, or so I thought. Item seven, 85 cents per cab to the office building at 1025 South Spring. The only lights on were in suite B on the second floor. According to the directory in the lobby, that was the office of the Fortina Friendly Loan Company. Loan office, huh? Yes, sir. Can I help you? Yeah, I'd like to see Mr. Fortina. You got an appointment? No, but I'd uh, like to make a little deal with him. Well, can I have your name, mister? It's uh, Morris, uh, Theodore Morris. Uh, just a minute, huh? Excuse me. Yeah, sure. Man says his name is Morris. Wants to see you, Mac. Oh? Hey, listen, has a chimp come back yet? No. And he said he was going to send Husky over there. Husky? Why? Well, that chimp said he was afraid if he showed up at that hotel... Careful. Yeah. Was... Well, careful what you say. Close the door. Sure. The chimp. And somebody was going over to the hotel. That could mean only for one thing, to get Smokey Sullivan. I carefully edged over closer to the door of Mickey's office, hoping I could hear more. It was too thick. And it suddenly dawned on me. If they knew I was the one who put Smokey in that hotel, they probably also knew why I'd come here. There was only one way to make sure. I'd have to go through, or at least try to go through, with a bluff I planned. Oh, sorry to keep you waiting, Mr. Morris, is it? Yeah, that's right, Mr. Fortina. Ted Morris. Oh, uh, Mary, when, the, uh, when he gets you, send him in. Sure, Mac. Uh, come in, please. Sit down. Yeah, surely. Thanks a lot. All right, I'll get right to the point, Mr. Fortina. Oh, by all means do, Mr. Morris. Well, I own a big shoe store over on North La Brea. Yeah? Well, business has been pretty bad lately. I've been losing a lot of money, too. Too much stock on hand, big inventory and hardness. Well, if it's good merchandise, I see no reason why we can't arrange a loan for you. Yeah, uh, well, a loan? Of course, sir. What else? Well, listen, I carry a lot of insurance on not only the stock, but the building, too. Oh? Uh, how much, Mr. Morris? Well, it adds up to over 185000 hmm, I see. It's very commendable. But why do you tell me about this insurance? Well, I said I'd get to the point. Now, listen. If that place was to uh, burn up some night, the whole works, I'd collect a lot of money on it, all the insurance. And, of uh course, be in a position to repay whatever loan I advanced to you. All right. Stop beating around the bush, 14. I want that place burned out. Can you fix it? Mr. Morris, if you want a loan, possibly even a size... Well, you know what I want. Come on. How about it? As I said, possibly we can advance it to you. Now, look, I didn't come However, up here to... as evidence of your good faith, your, uh, shall we say, good intentions... Uh, are you prepared to make a down payment on such a loan, say, uh, $10,000 cash in advance? What are you talking about? Set the fire, burn the place up so I can collect the insurance and I'll give you $15,000. Uh, just a minute. Who said anything about setting a fire? I did. Well? Who sent you here? If you said it was a former client, I won't believe oh, it. Oh, look, does it make any difference? Do you by any chance know a man by the name of Smokey Sullivan? 
Sullivan? He knows him all right, Mick. Well. The chimp? Shut up. Sure, Mick, this is the guy I told you about. I come to see Smokey at his room and house. What I left of him. Very interesting. After I ducked out, I hung around there. I seen him take Smokey in a cab. I followed him to that hotel. Did you send Husky over to take care of him? Sure. And listen. Yeah? I don't know what name this guy gives you, but when he knocks on Smokey's door, he says it's Johnny Dollar. Dollar? Insurance ticket. Yeah, that's right, Mickey. All right. So maybe I do arrange another fire with you in it, Dollar. Go ahead, Jim. Yeah, don't kill this dirty up. Oh. All right, now, Fortina, your turn. Don't move, Dollar. Reach for a gun and I pull this trigger. I see. Yeah. How are your eyes, Mickey? Can you see in the dark? What? Without this lamp in here? All right, All right you. Hey. Smokey was right at that, Johnny. Uh, hi, Pat. You seem to think you wouldn't need any help around here. You're right, Johnny. Yeah. Okay. When that strong arm, that husky Castellini, uh, came up to the hotel room after him, well... I had to tell him, Johnny. I had to tell him what it was all about. Yeah, it's okay, Smokey. It's okay. So we threw, threw Husky in the clink and came over here. Well, I got an admission out of him, Pat, but unless you can get these goons of his to talk, I don't know what you're going to hold him on. After what just happened in here... Shani will hold him and his goons just as long as we need to. And unless they want to take the whole rap for him, I think they'll talk. Yeah, they talked all right. And as a result, the police in a couple of nearby states should have no trouble at all in picking up some of the other of Fortina's boys, his hired torches. Ah, funny, isn't it? These stupid jerks just never seem to learn. Expense account total, including hotel bill, plane ticket back to Hartford, and the sizable bit of folding money for Smokey Sullivan, eight seventy four twenty. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Now here's a word from our star about the case he handles on next week's program. Thank you, Daniel. It's called the hapless ham matter, and yeah, you guessed it. The ham turns out to be an actor, a really bad one with one of the cleverest methods of committing murder I've ever known. There's a lot of action suspense in the story, and I think you'll like it. Who knows? Maybe if you listen closely, you'll be able to figure out his method even before I do. So join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, originates in Hollywood and is written, produced, and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in our cast were Virginia Gregg, Gene Tatum, Lawrence Dobkin, Vic Perrin, Paul Duboff, Don Diamond, and Frank Gerstle. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Dan Coverly speaking. Intrigue breeds terror as suspense brings a shady moonlight sale next on the CBS radio network. If I should ever become totally disabled, it would be a mighty comfortable feeling to have a check coming in every month regularly. Yes, it's a good feeling to know you have a financial cushion against trouble like that. Well, if you're a veteran with World War II or Korean GI insurance, you can protect yourself. You do it by adding a disability income writer to your present policy. The cost of the extra premium is just a few cents a day. For example, a 40-year-old veteran with a $10,000 term policy would pay only $1.60 a month for the added protection. If you sign up for the disability income provision, it works this way. After you have been totally disabled for six consecutive months, VA will pay you every month as long as this condition persists. $10 for each $1,000 of your GI insurance policy. That adds up to 100 a month if you hold a $10,000 policy. Full details about total disability income at any VA office. Radio 59, WROW, first on the dial in Albany, Schenectady, and Troy.